Mountain Nightline once again. We're so glad that you are joining us tonight because guess what? We've got a great program lined up tonight. I am Mary Sloan along with my daughter. Tony Suchka. Yes, and uh, thank you again for joining us. And we're going to show you who's going to be on in just a few minutes, aren't we? Or do you want to do it now? Oh, we can. Why All not? right, let's just make it real exciting. They look like they're ready to go over there, don't they're they? They're ready to <laughs> wave and say hi. Yes. We have got on uh, my sister, Narvis Hart. Wave real big, Narvis. <laughs> and then the, sit next to her is Pastor Sherry Damron. Oh, she's got a great message for tonight. Y'all don't want to go anywhere. She's been sharing it with me throughout the day. And you tell about our next guest. Our next you? guest is Tammy Carpenter. And I can't even remember how we got connected, but we've been connected uh, since last year. Mm -hmm. And we've finally got the opportunity to have her on um, tonight. She has written three books. And she was so kind and generous that she's giving away one of each of her books tonight. So you guys want to stay tuned throughout the show. We're yes. going to be giving away her book. She has one called, and I, I love the name of this because so many people get hurt in the church. And they take it and bury it and allow it to cause resentment. Right. But this says, Church Hurt Healed Me. And so... Um, I think that's a, a great title. It's a that, unique name. Yeah, yeah, that instead of using it to cause hurt and anger and bitterness, but it healed. Yeah. Um, and then Life Moments and Life Speaks was one she had written last year. So I'm looking forward to hearing more from her. So, I admire anybody that's written three books. I know. It just it amazes <laughs> me how people write a book. Maybe she'll teach us how. I want to <laughs> write a book, but I get so overwhelmed about it. I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I decided not to write a book. <laughs> no. Well, let's one just day. start the show out with giving away one oh, of her books. Oh, that'd be great because we're going to do three tonight. We're huh? going to do three. So we're going to take the first caller to get Church Hurt Healed Me. So if that's something that you think um, maybe would heal you in reading or you know someone, we're going to take the first caller right now for that book. And we've got a great yes. um, topic tonight. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is grace. Uh -huh. um, and I think something that, you know, has changed my life. And I know between you and I, um, we talk about grace all the time. Yes, we do, because we know what it's done for us, I tell you. And I wanted to share, too, um, I just went on a special little trip. <laughs> and I know you uh, you did too. <laughs> I'll, I'll have my bragging rights after you, okay? <laughs> well, I wanted to share a little bit. I was just had the opportunity to go to Cancun with my family and some friends, and it was just um, the best weather that we could ask for. All it was week? beautiful. Wow. Um, I just am always in amazement when I sit in front of palm trees in the ocean and just thank the Lord for just an opportunity to see that. I had some pictures I wanted to share. Um, there's my family, Aww. my husband Brad and my, my daughter Addison and my son Chase. That was close to one of our last nights. We were having dinner um, together at one of the best authentic Mexican restaurants at the resort. Um, and that was our last day, right? But we were getting stuffing one more meal in before we caught our <laughs> flight at the resort. And I just thought that was so sweet of the two of them. They had a great time. Oh, sweet. Um, and then let's see what the next one they got. Go ahead and pop that up. Okay, so this was the crew of people we went with. There was 16 total. It is a lot of moving parts and a lot of chefs in the kitchen when you're trying to decide what you're going to do next. But we had a great time. Um, the kids had a great time, wow. so we were able to just enjoy vacation with family um, and then do some things on our own. That how, was the how view. How many went? 16 total. 16, wow. And this was from the back porch of our room. Like, it was just oh, beautiful. We've like, seen enough That's time. where we had coffee <laughs> and took in the fresh air. And the water there is gorgeous. There it is. Like, it looks fake. It's turquoise and purple and blue and... So it's just beautiful. I just feel so blessed to have been able to go on a trip with my family and friends like that. And I noticed you like were on that. Facebook, too, from over there. Yes, you remember? Yes, uh -huh. yes. So you got to tune in, too, huh? Yeah, so <laughs> it was nice. It was very much fun. Well, you know, you've got nothing on me. Guess what I did this what week? What did you do? <laughs> 
I went to the lake. <laughs> hey, there's uh, lake is awesome too. I love sitting around a campfire with the lake and the just the water looks like glass sometimes. And... Oh, it was so relaxed, and I was just thinking, you know, it was so funny. My, my sister um, had a place there and asked me to come up, and Arvis went, and uh, some other family members. Joy was there, and. Uh, we had a great time all day long, and it got to be about 8 o'clock, and everybody started leaving, and me and my sister looked at each other and said, what are we going to do now? <laughs> I mean, you know, you're out of your element. You're out of your TV element. You're out of this you're element. You're disconnected you know. on uh, yeah, said, electronics. And we looked at the clock, and it was only 9 o'clock, and she said, well, I guess we could go to bed. <laughs> and But you know what? Going to bed is good, too, and getting some good rest. Rest, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I learned something on every vacation that I need to add some extra days when I get home because a vacation can wear you out. Yeah, you've got to rest from that time at the lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was only 10 minutes away, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's awesome. But it was good. Well, it I'm was glad fun. you were able to go and spend some time with yes, your sisters and yes. your family. And I might go back up there Saturday, Tony. Well, hey. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? I want to let you know, though, that we have prayer partners back there tonight that's ready to take your call if you have a need now you want to call and let us know what you want us to pray about at the end of the program we all gonna be agreeing together and uh if you want to get on facebook you can catch our program there if you know someone that don't get it locally tell them we're on facebook and uh just go tonight uh, our wggs tv or either nightline live with mary and tony you can catch the program there and just bring it up and share it with your friends too if you'd like and it's a great topic i was texting some friends earlier that kind of went through a grace walk with me and just said you got to listen tonight we're talking about grace i wanted to read our scripture it's from romans 8 2 and it says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death and that's really what he is. He is grace. Jesus is grace. He yes. is who has set us free. Um, and I just, this book, Mom, you gave to me, and I know you talked about it. This is um, Destined to Rain from Joseph Prince. And um, you had told me about him over and over, and I was like, I'll get to it later. And <laughs> when I finally read it, I told Brad, you've got to read this. Mm -hmm. You've got to read it. We both read it, and then we led a small group at our church on it. And there were, I have a friend who says, my life is completely different now because yes. of that group you led with the book. This book changed our life. Um, it did. Just the revelation of grace. Um, the way he brought it across was phenomenal. Yes. And there was one thing that I wanted to bring out that he um, mentioned in this book that I always think about. Um, 1 John 1, 7 talks about cleansing, cleansing us from our sins. And in the Greek, the word cleanse in this scripture um, means to present in a continuous action which means from that moment that you receive the blood of Jesus, the Christ, the blood of Jesus keeps on cleansing you. And one of the things he wrote, I'll never forget, it's as if you're under a waterfall of forgiveness. Even when you fell, the waterfall never stops. Mm -hmm. It keeps on and on cleansing you from all of your sin and unrighteousness. Amen. Um, and that's how grace is. It's just we live under that waterfall of being cleansed. The washing of the water by the word. Yes. And, you know, and I love that song. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. I just love Romans 6. It talks about being set free from the penalty of sin. But not just that, the slavery of sin. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not slaves to sin anymore. Uh, verse 16 says, shall we sin because we're not under law but under grace, no. But we can become a slave of righteousness. If I'm going to be a slave, it's going to be a slave of righteousness. I like that. You yeah. always hear slave to sin. I don't know if I've ever heard someone say, uh, I want to be a slave to righteousness. And you know, I was talking, Chase and I read scriptures in the car on the way to school, and he read one, and it was about righteousness. And, you know, you take for granted that, do you know what that means, you know? And he was like, well, I, I think, or, you know. Uh -huh. I said, it just means you're justified. You're in, You're right, in right standing, standing with God. Mm -hmm. You've been justified because Jesus died on the cross for you. Yes. Um, so I, one of the things 
that you and I were talking about, another thing in this book, you can't stop your flesh or Satan from putting negative thoughts or temptations in your mind, but you can have victory over your thought by seeing that all your thoughts are continually cleansed right. by the blood of Jesus. And you know, someone said you may get knocked down, but you won't get knocked out. And I heard this this week. This was so good. Jesus was never persecuted until he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And you know what? We will be persecuted, even if the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. But there is that grace that sustains us. And if you fall from it, even Joseph Prince is preaching a little of this now, you fall from grace. When we don't have our eyes on Jesus and seeking after Him, we fall from grace. But just pick yourself up. Somebody said, you've fallen from grace and can't get up. Well, He's going to pick you up and help you to stay up. Thank God for grace. That's good. Amen. That's good. <laughs> well, we want you to share the show on Facebook because we want this message to reach more and more people. And I know that through social media is just a yes. great way for those to be able to get connected and hear a message maybe they've not heard tonight. I know that Sherry... Um, Pastor Sherry Dameron is going to be mm -hmm. sharing some things and I haven't heard it but mom you keep telling me about it and you keep saying oh it's good it's good and, it is and it Sherry is. just um, I think the Lord always reveals the word to her in such a great way that she always has a, a great word she's to bring amazing across. just amazing yes and she's going to be singing right now for us and guess what she's going to sing God bless America And in this day, she would arise and lead your church and our country to victory. Oh, I see all glory gleaming in her eyes. So God, protect her and forgive her and forgive us of our sins. And God, bless America again, Jesus. And God, bless America again. You see all the trouble that she in. And would you wash a pretty face? Oh, and draw her eyes and then. Oh, God bless America again.
Thank you, Sherry. I don't think we can sing enough about God Bless America, can we? I know. Really. God Bless America again. Sherry's going to be with us uh, just a little bit later in the program, and she has got a great message to share about grace and generational blessings and all that. So what have you got there? Somebody well, want I wanted to just say we had a winner for the book Church Hurt Healed Me, and her name is Shelby from Greenville, South Carolina. So Yay, we will get that in the mail to you. Thanks yes. for calling in. <laughs> Well, uh, guess who we have with us over here now? This pretty lady. I think She's you a look, regular. <laughs> I think so. You look like Mary. Are you not Mary Sloan? Well, everybody thinks I'm your twin. I don't know how. Everybody I'm a thinks blonde. you're Mary and you're Edith. So. Well, no, they'll call her Mary and me Narvis and with my dark hair and her light hair. But hey, anyway, we must look a lot of light for that, huh? Yeah. Well, you're but, both beautiful. Say that again. Yeah. You're both beautiful. <laughs> Tony, you're so sweet. Yes. I get it from you. At our age, we need to hear that. <laughs> I tell you, she just blessed me with my birthday present. Oh. I was just excited because I wanted one like you, and it was the oh. vacuum phone that oh, connects. Oh, yeah, I got a new phone, and my daughter ordered me this little ring here yeah. that uh, you just... It's like hook a pop on, socket. On, you hook anyway. On the car. Anyway. And she got nervous with her birthday. <laughs> well, you now we got off on that. He wanted one. I so. know. <laughs> well, Narvis, I'm going to read two or three lines about you for those who may not know you, you know. Narvis Hart has helped thousands of women with addictions through Heart of Hannah. She now is president of Overflow Ministries International. Holds a monthly meeting on the last of last of every Friday the last Friday of every month. Her mission is to impart into lives that there's an overflow that God wants to impart into this generation. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Narvis, again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, Narvis, you thought you were going to retire when you sold the physical building yeah. of Heart of Hannah. Of course, you still work through Heart of Hannah, mm -hmm. some. But uh, you ended up refiring, I think. I think you sit as long as you could in that recliner, didn't you? <laughs> That's right. Psalms 40 said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined <laughs> unto me. So he <laughs> inclined. Recline. He said, right. Narvis, it's time for you the to recline. get out of the recliner and <laughs> incline again. That's right. So where did it take you into what ministry? Well, you know, uh, Heart of Hannah, I would have never left there. But I had been sick and in the hospital, and it took me about a year and a half to get over uh, the sickness right. that I had. And so, um, you know, I thought God was through with me. I was going to retire in that recliner, like you said, <laughs> and that... Um, you know, we we bought us a, a, a motor home and was going to get out and going camping and different things. Mm -hmm. and and uh, But, you know, there's always that deep yearning when you do work for God. you got to have that in your life. Yes, you do. Because you don't retire from God. No, you don't. It fills uh, you up right, to yes. encourage and uplift others. Yeah, the more I give out, the more I, I want to give out, you know, and uh, it really does. It does something to you when you just give out to other people. And so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I for so many years, I just turned my hurts around and helped other people, and that's what we have to do. So you started around. what then recently? Uh, just recently, I started with the Overflow Ministries, Overflow. and uh, you know, I believe that we we're in Easley, and that's at the South and West venue in mm -hmm. Easley. But uh, uh, you know, I believe that God's just going to pour out an overflow mm -hmm. there in that city. He's going to just pour out blessings, miracles. I believe lives are going to be restored, marriages are going to be restored, and. People are going to be healed and set free and delivered from, uh, you know, my passion is drugs and alcohol, helping people with them. I still help women in the detention centers by sending life recovery Bibles. And I, I love to see people set free from right. uh, the bondage that Satan has them Well, I've down. already written your theme song. I'm I walking in the overflow. You're going to sing that tomorrow night too, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know. So, we'll see. Well, you know, speaking of tomorrow night, yes. tell us who you're going to have. 
Well, <laughs> she was getting ready. To oh well, Sherry Downron, yeah. which is going to be graphic, I think, speaking Sherry, just too. shortly, and uh, we're so excited because you know what? When she comes, she brings a fresh that fresh anointing, mm -hmm. that fresh word right. to you, and so we're excited about there you that. Go. Yeah, there it is. And that's what address? South and West Venue? Mm -hmm. in At 109 South 1st Street. And that's across the street. If you know where Robinson's Funeral Home downtown <laughs> is, it's across the street from there. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. We have fellowship at 6.30, dessert, lemonade, stuff like that. Just yeah, a fellowship come early a for a cookie and something to something drink. Something like some that. Yes, home. it is. Yeah, so, and we're going to have a fun. great time with praise and worship tomorrow. And also, Sherry's yeah. going to be a good time, I tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. And, and so I, um, tell the viewers again how often that you're going to have this. We have it the fourth Friday of each month, uh, and it's at the South and West Venue. And uh, we always start at that very same time. July will be the only time, the fourth Friday. It'd be the third Friday in July. But and other have, than bring that, bring in different speakers. Different each speakers month. each month. Just uh, different anointings. We. Uh, we have uh, human trafficking in July that's going to be coming. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Switch. Switch, yes. Switch is coming in July and going to be sharing. And I'm going to be sharing a, a word on overflow. <laughs> and so Dana Russell's going to be sharing. We already have several lined up. So we're just excited about what God's going to do. Now, you're, you're speaking Saturday morning, too, aren't yeah. you? This coming Saturday. It's Saturday at 1 o'clock, 1 to 4. Got a graphic on that, I think, yeah. too, uh, yeah. for this Saturday morning on Narvis, April the 27th, 2019, 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 4 p.m., isn't it? Yeah, it is. There you go. And, you know, it's a formal event. And what she's doing, uh, it's Bathsheba Floyd that's in charge of that. And our theme is Amazing Grace. And, um, wow. yeah, and she is, she has gotten people to help her get formal outfits for women that are in shelters so they can come to the event and enjoy that too and be dressed up and uh, just feel, feel like that, you know, something's really happening in their lives. Because yeah. when you're in a shelter, not always do you feel that way. Right. And so yes. they're going to do all kind of special gifts that day for those ladies. So it's going to be a wonderful time. It's right behind, it's in an auditorium right behind Greenville High School here in, in Greenville. So it's easy to find. Juanita Butler Community Center. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Well, that's One great. to four. Yeah. So. Well, we'll be... We'll be back and talk a little more, but we're going to go to Sherry Dameron right now. She's got a song called Third Day. <laughs> Sometimes a vessel must be marred Don't count her out until it's over Until the trumpet blows Cause just remember it was her captain That on the third day rose Yes, I know She's been through some battles And I know that she's been scarred But at the hands of the potter Sometimes a vessel must be marred Don't count around on till it's over Until the trumpet blows Cause just remember, it was her captain that on the third day rose. And I believe that it's the third day, and we're about to shine. And all those prayers from long ago. says to you and me. 
God is just good like that. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. He promised he'd have a bride just to call his own. And he said that we would worship him all around the throne. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He is almost ready for His bride. Thank you, Sherry. Beautiful song. Um, before we get into Sherry's interview, um, my, I wanted to let my sister tell you about something that's really been on her heart this weekend. A little bittersweet, but, you know, uh, something she, she wanted to share. So, Narvis, just go ahead and share. Okay. Well, uh, you know, Mary, I was talking about how Saturday I'm going to be speaking on Amazing Grace. And... Um, and, you know, we all could speak about that amazing grace and where it's brought us all from, couldn't mm -hmm. we? Yes. Um, but 45 years, Saturday will be 45 years that I had a daughter, Melody Camay, and it was, it's been the grace of God that I didn't go to prison after she was born because my husband was running around on me. And uh, it was, it's a wonder that I didn't do a lot of things because I started getting high. I was taking Valium, Percocet, and drinking liquor. And it was, it was the grace of God that brought me through mm -hmm. where I was at. Yes. And so I'm going to celebrate. Amen. His amazing grace. Amen. Saturday. Amen. <laughs> Love it. Amen. What a great testimony. Yes. That's yes. I mean, what an incredible testimony, and it's that the grace... I know the it. Lord brought her through that to lose a child, mm. to have such heartache. I can't imagine um, no. losing a child. Someone I saw, Dan and I were talking about lost a, mm. uh, their child this week, and just something that I can't imagine what you would feel and go through. And for the Lord to take something mm -hmm. like that, right. turn it around, and yeah. change your life. I remember when she went through all that. She was a different person than she is now. Yeah. That's what that amazing grace would do for right. you. Right. <laughs> you know, I even called the attorney to see how many years I'd have to serve for killing my husband <laughs> oh, and Lord. killing his girlfriend, you know. <laughs> and so I like I to tell, be proactive finding out yeah, how much time you got. Don't hold back. <laughs> and that's why I know that I could have served many years in prison and I have helped so many women get out of prison. Yes. Right. And it just drew you to a work that where you yeah. can help others. That's huh? right. We Amen. turn our hurts around and help somebody else. Amen. You know? well, yes, we do. Hurt people hurt people, That's but right. healed people heal people. That's right. That's right. That's good, yes. Tony. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> <Real good. laughs> yes. Well, we have Sherry Dameron sitting yes. here next to you. Beautiful oh, lady. Yes, she is. Singing oh, some beautiful you. songs. Thank okay. you for coming. You've been on the road today trying to get here. Huh? Yes, ma'am. It's an honor. Yeah, well, thank you. Always love having you here. Well, uh, I don't have a lot to say about because we've talked a lot about you before, but you are the pastor of Sanctuary, the mm -hmm. Sanctuary in Vidalia, Georgia. Uh, Sherry and her husband, Dwayne, are proud parents of a son, Sterling. 
Sherry is the author of a book called Undone about her life. She's a songwriter and has recorded many CDs and produced several videos. And after a true revelation of the grace of God and surrendering her life to Christ, she wants to tell everyone His grace is truly amazing. Yes. She's got the same story, Narvis. I know. Truly yeah. amazing grace. I know. <laughs> I didn't call the lawyers to see how long I'd spend if I killed my ex-husband. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to tell the lobster and put him in the pot. <laughs> we thought you had a story, but hey. <laughs> hey, we got it now. Well, you know, Sherry, we've talked a lot about your past and some of the programs that we, uh, you've been on before, but... Today you were sharing some things with me about your son Sterling, and uh, I said you've got to share this tonight. It's going to be so good. So, what's going on with Sterling? <laughs> Sterling is absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, all moms say that about How the kids, but he? he is 18 years old. He'll be 19 wow. in just a few days. 18. As a matter of fact, I'm getting old. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be 19 in just a few in just a few days, and he's in college now. He's um, going to. Uh, somewhere, Georgia Southern, that's where he is. He's in Georgia Southern. That's <laughs> good for you to know somewhere. that. Yeah, it's really he's somewhere. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I cried and cried and cried, and I thought I was going to be, I'm, I'm going to be fine. You know, I can handle this. I'm mm -hmm. good. But I cried for days and days when the child left, not knowing he was going to come right back. That is true. <laughs> they don't oh, leave. They come right back. You know, he's yeah. close enough he can drive back and forth. It's 45 minutes. So it's great. But I, I spent a lot of time praying because... I raised Sterling, a uh, uh, really shelter. I mean, you know, he's he's done nothing but travel with me and preach with me, and he's been raised in. I took everything that was secular, and all he had was mm -hmm. just just you know word and and that's just all he had. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really, I was afraid because I thought when he gets mm -hmm. over there in all of that, is he going to be curious? You know, what, what's what's mm -hmm. going to happen? And and come to find out, he was curious. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the funny thing is, is that I was praying and God began to speak to me about, about Sterling. And I called Sterling and I said, son, um, what are you doing? And he said, what did the Holy Ghost tell you? <laughs> and I said, I'm, you tell me before I tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. The Holy Ghost ain't told me nothing, but I just went ahead and told him yeah. that. You know, so he just go ahead and <laughs> spill the beans. You know spill he it, tells you know? me everything, right? <laughs> That's right. You know he tells me everything. And and Sterling had he had gotten he had gotten a little um, gotten involved with some friends nothing bad nothing major or anything like that, but um, decided he wanted to try to see what the party was all about and, and all this kind of stuff and he's heard me talk about it enough he should have known better, but the, the amazing mm -hmm. grace of God see here's mm -hmm. the thing, the grace of God does not save us so that we can stay where we are. No, that's right. The grace of God saves us to give us the ability mm -hmm. to get out of where we are and stay from where it, what it brought us out of. Mm -hmm. And I've always taught Sterling that. I've always told him, grace is not lascivious. Grace does not tell you to go do anything that you want to do. And that's what many of his friends was telling him. Well, your mother's a grace preacher. You know, so um, so you're going to be fine. You know, you can you can do this, and you can you know you can dabble in this and dabble in that, and, and everything's going to be fine. And and he thought, well, okay, we're going to try that. And and the beautiful thing is, is that he called me and he said um, he said, Mama, he said I can't I can't quit hearing your prayers. Mm -hmm. I can't stop hearing the word that you prayed over me in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. He said every time I go to pick up a beer, every time I go to do what everybody else is doing, I hear the word. And he said he literally walked outside of a bar, and he just he stayed outside of the bar. And he said, Mommy, it was so loud. And he said it was, it was deafening that it was so loud. And I said, I, I know it does get loud in the bar. He said, no, ma'am, the word, the word that you wow. prayed over me, that's what was loud. So he started inviting his friends to church. Mm -hmm. And now I've got these, these, these kids coming from, he goes back on Saturday, picks them up, brings them to church <laughs> on Sunday. They're call, and I made the mistake of telling them, if you, if you ever need me, call me. Well, you know, kids don't need you till midnight. Mm. So it's about midnight, you know, they're having a Bible study and, and he said, um, oh, mom, were you asleep? No, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. You know, and they're asking me about God's ability. Wow, isn't that amazing? What do I do with these temptations? How do I, how do I get away from these temptations? How do I overcome this? Teenagers. And at teenagers in, in college mm -hmm. and, and now they're, they're, at, you know, going to a, a, a Bible study class that's on the college campus and see, that's the amazing grace of God. Wow. And that's, you said, how do I, how do I? And this was something I heard Joseph Prince say years ago. You know, 
your heart transformation mm. creates behavior modification. We don't mm, change our behavior first and that's then right. seek Him. To, right. You know, we have to have a heart transformation. And that's what's happened. That's it. Their hearts have been transformed. Yes. And so now mm -hmm. their behavior is instead of, you know, at the bar at midnight, mm -hmm. they're calling you wanting to know that's about, great. you know, <laughs> something in the Word. Mm -hmm. You want to you talk about making a mama proud and making, I mean, they just it excited the pudding out of me. I didn't mind stayed up all night long, you know. Ask me anything. If I don't know the answer, I'll lie to you right now. Just ask me about the Word of God. Yeah. I'll, I'll you tell covered. you something, whether it's right or wrong. Because, I mean, God is just so, I don't, you know, I don't mean that. But, no, I mean, God I'm glad just, you said that. Yeah, I promise I don't mean that. I'm going to know what I'm talking about. But it's so, it's so exciting because what I saw was, I saw the Word coming alive where He said, if you raise them right. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they mm -hmm. won't stray, but I'm saying grace will bring them back. Mm -hmm. I can't promise you that they won't touch the unclean right. thing. And I, won't, I can't promise you that they won't want the unclean thing. But I can right. promise you that His grace is so amazing that it will draw them back every Amen. single time. Because mm -hmm. it gives them the ability to say, guess what? I don't need this. I don't want this. Right. I know something that's greater. Well, I know something that's stronger. I know okay. something that's more amazing. And now he's sitting up, you know, he's, he's taking his guitar to college and, and they're all, you know, they're, they're learning and they're sitting up and they're playing and, 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 and it's, 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 just, it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And I asked God, I said, God, when we're building the new building, I need young people. I need young people in there. I was there. thinking that today when you told me that that's just all about your building that's you're trying it. to build. That God's that's preparing it. it right now. Every time I would say, you know what, y'all, I, I don't know I don't know how I'm going to do this and I don't know how I'm going to do that. And I don't want just old people in the church. I mean, I'm one of the old people. So <laughs> I'm not talking about, you know, my mom and my daddy because they're 160 <laughs> years old and old Methuselah. But God bless you. I love you, mom and daddy. But, <laughs> but I mean, I want, we got, we've got to have a perpetuation. We've yeah. got to have the young people. You have to have the next the generation to rise up. have to. And take that baton. That's it. God is generational. And I see God. I see them saying, uh, you know, Pastor, we can do that. Miss Sherry, we can do that. Miss Sherry, we know how to do that. And I'm thinking, okay, God, guess what? He had this the whole time. Right. Who'd right. have thunk it? I know. I thought about that today. <laughs> but when people ask you, what are you all about? What do you think you say to them? would say to them? What am I all about? The Word. The Word, yes. <laughs> the Word. Because without it, we see we mess up grace. Mm-hmm. With, that's how we mess up is we don't know the word mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation. So we get a we get a facet of grace. It's like getting a facet of God and he's multifaceted, many faceted. So we get a, a portion of grace mm -hmm. and, and we say, okay, well then grace lets me do this and grace lets me do that. And it's not what it lets you do. I, I'm mm -hmm. not trying to see how much I can do and still just kind of skirt hell. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I really know His amazing grace and when I really know the Word of God and it begins to come up in me, then it makes me want to see how close to Him that I can get. It does, it's not about the do's and don'ts. It's about who I am. And when you fall from grace... He don't turn his back on you, does he? Not a, not he's near he's right ready to just take you back in. Mm -hmm. And if you've fallen and can't get up, just rise yeah, up. Because right. right. he wants to that's draw it. you to him. And she's going to talk about that some more too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, before you do, we wanted to show a video of, um, and Mom, you're in this video too. Oh, I know it. I'm <laughs> this is a video that video. Um, Sherry filmed, and it's called I See the Lord. So enjoy this, and when we get back, we're going to talk some more about grace. Yeah. Yes. Looking out at everything I hear, I hear a voice saying, son, it's time to go. Your bride is getting ready for her wedding day. And I see love, there are falling. 
much children the church about to rise with power with might and glory and there's fire One of the things we wanted to point out in that video is that Sherry, all the people in the video, she had gotten from rehab centers, right, to come so very for mom. So I was the only one that wasn't from rehab. She was the only one that wanted to drunk among us. all those men were from rehab to come do the video. We're in, like, From a drug rehab there in, yeah. in North Carolina. That was one of the things that I asked for. For one thing, I want to be surrounded by young men. But anyway, I want, I'm just kidding. I promise I'm just kidding. But, I mean, that's just that's, that's my heart because uh -huh. I want them to see you can be free. Yes. Not just, don't just, don't just rehabilitate me and let me go back to what I was doing. No, you can be free and free indeed. Yeah. Amen. So it was a blessing to be Amen. with them. They were on fire. <laughs> I know Take they a drunk and put the, you know, really get the word of God in them, and I'm, they'll be on fire for God. Yeah, yeah. that was a great video, yeah. actually. It was, it was fun. He did really well with that. Well, you're going to be talking some more about grace and the generational blessing. Is that what you're going to get into? Or this generation, what it means during this time? Get into whatever you tell me to get into. No. Uh, well, <laughs> what what I found out with with grace is first of all, you know, God is a generational God, mm -hmm. and I've learned that many things we will start, our children will finish. Many things that was started before us, it's what we are finishing. It's just perpetual, you know. It's just God moving from generation to generation. He said, "I am the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob," just generational to generational. But something that I've learned is, you know, the church doesn't like change. And that's how we got into religion. It's because we don't want to change. For God's sake, we, everybody's got to have pews, and they all need to be purple because, you know, that's the color that it's supposed to be, and that's royal, and, and I'm not against purple by no means. But everything has to look like everything. But I found out something, and I learned this. You, sometimes some things you can't learn, but through trial and error. I learned with my son that it really doesn't matter to me what beat you listen to. 
I really couldn't care less what your beat is or what your, uh, the only thing I care is, is it talking about Jesus? I don't care. I don't care if the church, I don't care if you paint it black or if you paint it white or you put a steeple on top. It doesn't matter to me. Is it word base? And I've learned that with this thing about grace. What I found out is we, we went through this little thing here where I think everybody was about to have a heart attack because everybody was preaching grace. But they were preaching it to a point that there was no power in it. Wow. And good. see, grace without power yeah. is, is no good. And what you've done is you have disfigured mm -hmm. the image of God because His grace mm -hmm. is amazing. The, the image of God, when you talk about grace, the image of grace is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So if I give you a grace that has no power, then have I not dis I have disfigured His image. And, and that's became what we almost did. like desensitizing even what grace is because it was right. spoken about like and you heard oh hyper grace hyper grace I'm like well it it kind of is hyper grace like what it does you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean it does it is but see we it were teaching you. the word grace the the the, the g-r-a-c-e grace instead of teaching the w-o-r-d grace because mm -hmm. if you have grace without the word of God then it's then it's then it's a dead grace Mm -hmm. then all it is is it's just another word. It's just another something that we sing. And that's why we have people singing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, but it doesn't sound sweet to them because they don't really know what it's done. It's not amazing to them. Mm -hmm. What makes grace amazing is when it works. Right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work without the word. Mm -hmm. See, I've got to know why it works. Exactly. I've got to understand and I've got to know that what he said was, he said that he would keep me in the middle of temptation. Mm -hmm. But without the word of God, there's not, how can you keep me? Mm -hmm. Why do I need the Word of God? Because without the Word of God, I can't hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. He speaks in one language and one language only, and that is Word. Now, I know He speaks in frog and, li and flies and all that kind of stuff because He spoke to the frogs and they obey, but, but you got to have Word. You know, I heard somebody say uh, this week that uh, we preach a gospel of just give me Jesus, and He, he is the greatest thing we'll ever person will ever meet and that's our start but you're going to need a whole lot more after that and he teaches you to get in the word right. to mm -hmm. to uh let the word empower you to find you a home church to be a part of people helping people you know mm -hmm. after we find jesus we got to know what to do afterwards don't we we got to know how to be jesus mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see there are a lot of people who do good it's not enough to do good because you, once again you're in works Right. It's just doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing and I'm not being, yes. then then mm -hmm. then what good have I really done? Right. Because the Bible said that even the even even the devil can be good. The devil can do nice things. Bad people do good things, <laughs> you know. And and they don't stand for the word at all. You've got when when we are doing good, it's out of a being good. In other words, I am being Christ to somebody. I'm not, I'm just not being good right. on a good day. Right. If I really know grace and I have the word of God in me, I will be good on a bad day. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Well, talk a little bit about someone like the fallen from grace. I think, I mean, I think that's exactly, I mean, that, that's exactly what I'm saying is I don't think you can really fall from grace, but you have fallen from grace when you don't understand it. When you preached it in a lascivious way. Now, you know, I, I love the song, The Reckless Love of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, that overwhelming, <laughs> that reckless love of God. There's nothing like it. Because with me being raised in a religious uh, connotation, then, then I never really understood grace. So when I started hearing about grace, well, I just went crazy with it. I mean, I was just all about grace. But what I did was I got into the Word of God. And I, I began to study the Greek, and I began to study the Hebrew, and I began to understand what is it that makes this grace so amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't tell me just the word. I need to know why. Why can I live this? Why mm -hmm. am I free? And how am I going to stay free? Because I don't care. You can get saved by his amazing grace. But guess what? When you just give it just a few days and temptation is coming. And I can't right. just look at temptation and say, oh, well, the, well, because of the grace of God, then I'm not scared of you. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall into temptation. That's fallen from grace. I'm going to fall into temptation. But when I begin to know the Word of God and the Word of God begins to work in me, it's called renewing your mind. Mm -hmm. 
Right. When I renew my mind to the Word of God, that's when grace begins to have its perfect work in me. And that's when it begins to have power in me. And now all of a sudden, the grace that I'm walking in has power over the sin that is coming against me. And now I'm not fighting the sin because I'm hidden in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I show you something? Yes. Okay. I was waiting for you to show that. Okay. <laughs> Take me a second. Watch this. Many times we don't understand why we're saved because we bring them to church, but we don't, they don't know why they need church. So what we do, what they do is they come to church because I got caught drinking. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to go to jail if I don't come to church. Mm -hmm. And they don't really know right. why they need Christ. Well, why do you need Christ? I'll tell you why mm -hmm. you need Christ. You need Christ because of what Adam and Eve did. When I get to heaven, I'm going to slap both of them. You need Christ <laughs> because of what they her did. for having to bear labor. Just exactly. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have to do that. My young was given to me. But anyway, here's what happened. How did I fall when Adam fell? I'll tell you how. Because the Bible says this. The Bible says that I was in the loins of Adam when he fell. Okay, all of creation was in his loins. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. All of creation was in his loins. So now if I fell with Adam, if I fell with Adam, which means I'm over here beside him. Okay, if I fell with him, you don't have a head, but you know what I'm saying? If I fell with him, then that means that I had a decision in his sin. But see, I didn't have a decision because I was in him. So if that's true, that's why, that's why, that's why I was born a sinner. Because I had no choice of what Adam did because I was in his loins. So if that's true with the first man, Adam, mm -hmm. how much more true is that going to be with the second man, Adam, which is in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus? So if I, if I fell in Adam, guess what? I'm going to rise in Christ. <laughs> so if I keep my grace keeps me in Christ Jesus, I'm not sitting over here beside Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. So when he was that same power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead because mm -hmm. I am in him and because he is in me. Now, all of a sudden, everything he did because I'm in him, mm -hmm. I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk righteous because he is righteous. That's grace. Because, see, I know that because the Word of God taught me that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be good because He is good. Why? Because I'm in Him. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm beside Him. This lascivious grace puts me beside Him. But amazing grace puts me in Him. Wow. So yeah. now whatever He did, I, matter of fact, He said it this way. He said, greater things that I, greater things that I did, you are going to do. Why? Because you're hidden in me. So now when the enemy comes at me, I am hidden in grace. He don't see me. He doesn't see me. All he, he's going to come straight up into the face of Jesus Christ. If I really understand grace and that I'm hidden in it, I'm not using it as a crutch because he said that I, I don't sin that grace may abound. Because the thing is, I'm hidden in Christ. I don't want to sin anymore because I'm in him. So everything he wants, I want. I got to walk like him. I got to talk like him. I got to be like him. I can't do it unless I'm in him. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Oh, my little okay. doll helps me explain that kind <laughs> of I have to see things. And um, you know, I remember I was in special classes in school. And the way we learned in school in my classes, I don't know how y'all learned in y'all's classes, but in the classes that wore the helmets, the way we learned was they gave us illustrations. Yeah. So now when I preach, I've got to have an illustration. Well, that it helps, helps me doesn't to, it? It helps me to get it. Well, it it's keeps a great, people's attention. It's a too. great visual, too, like you mm -hmm. said, that if we were fallen with Adam, we also rise with Christ. Mm -hmm. And you hear it all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. But really to see that, that I'm hidden hidden in grace. Mm -hmm. Grace yeah. doesn't give us the permission to mm -hmm. sin, but it gives us, you know, it changes our heart. And I love that. Love your yeah. showing that. There. Thank you for awesome. my, let me do my show and tell. <laughs> it empowers us, doesn't it? It does empower us. It, I know that grace is, is God's unmerited favor, and I love that mm -hmm. because we cannot merit His you favor. You cannot earn. You can't earn it. It's impossible. But it's not just God's unmerited <laughs> favor. What grace is is God's ability to go and sin no more. Well, it's his ability. <laughs> when I studied that and I, I realized that, I thought, okay, that's how mm -hmm. I'm not going to slap you upside the head when you cuss me out. Because I, because I have mm -hmm. God's ability, his sure. grace gives me the ability to love, to love my enemy. 
to pray for those who despitefully use me. Mm -hmm. It's because of His grace. Amen. What a good message. Yes. I, we only have less than two minutes, probably closer to a minute. We've had people call in um, this I just wanted to read this particular one. Um, he's asking for prayer for healing of heart trouble and uh, crippling arthritis. And he's been a supporter of WGGS for many years. And we've got others that have called in. But I want you to just look into the camera and pray for those viewers. We've got about 60 seconds. Father, I just want to wanna thank you and I want to bless you because of who you are. Right now, by your stripes, we are healed. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's emotional or if it's in the body. Yes. We are healed. I speak healing and I speak peace and yes. I speak the mercy and grace of God and the blood of God over every single viewer. And we thank you, Father, because it is finished and it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, stay tuned with us. We've got Tammy Carpenter that's going to be in our 9 o'clock hour. We're going to be giving away two more books. And remember, Pastor Sherry Dameron is with Overflow Ministries tomorrow night at 630 and easily. So don't miss it.